So I'm just going to... I haven't played Void Weaver in a bit. I might do some Void Weaver shuffles in a bit as well. Because I want to test some new things, some new theories. It's a shame that you have to take Void Shield to get down here. I think that there's not a lot to actually change in this one. I just want to go over everything and just get it fresh in my brain before I start talking and one taking this shit. Oh, I really want to... I want to go through this and not take half an hour. Like, I would love to not take half an hour. Uh, this is going to be the Void Weaver talent build. And I'm going to quickly go over the talents because a lot of the talents are quite similar to the Oracle one. I would recommend watching the Oracle video first. Void Weaver one's a little bit more niche, more of a fun build that you can play. There are definitely situations where it's good, but there are fewer situations than when Oracle is good. So I'm going to start with the talents in the middle and talk about what Void Weaver actually is. So in essence, whenever you Mind Blast, it spawns this galaxy thing. The galaxy thing follows people around and slows them or gives you move speed depending on which talent you take and ticks for damage every second. And at the end of it, it explodes and does a bunch of damage. Now there's talents that modify the rift and improve it, but TLDR, you can increase it by up to three seconds by smiting. And when you get this rift thing, your smite changes into this thing called Void Blast, which is now a shadow version of smite that does a bunch more damage. So for like eight seconds, you can spam Void Blasts and do pumper damage and it's shadow. So if you get kicked, it's not a big deal. Well, less of a big deal than if you get kicked on Holy and someone's about to die and you're sad, right? So Void Blast, good stuff. Over here, this is the slow. Very nice. So against two melee and stuff like that, you can get a nice little slow on them and cause them some problems. Then we've got Powered Shield, Additional Absorb. We've got Shadow of Death actually consumes shields. So if you see someone shield, you can throw a death into it and it will do extra damage into the shield. However, a lot of the time, if they don't have a lot of buffs, dispelling it can be better. In the middle, we've got Darkening Horizon. This was what I was talking about. We can extend the duration of the rift by up to three seconds, so the 11 second total. The other one is actually, I think, quite weak. Summoning in a, a, a rift extends the duration of your five shortest atonements by only one second. Like, yeah, weird one. I think this is kind of for raid maybe, but it just seems like it, one second, really. So basically, Void Weaver, uh, Void Wraith is about double the damage of just taking regular Mindbender. It's pretty nice. So I think this is definitely a worth talent to be taking. Depth of Shadows is okay. You just don't get that many situations where you can actually get value out of it. Whereas, obviously, Void Wraith is getting reduced by... Which one is it? This one? Void Summoner. So you're getting quite a lot of them out throughout a game. And so the actual damage difference adds up. So that's what happened for Void Wraith. Void Heart is just, yeah, more atonement healing while your, your Rift is up. And then, obviously, everything is Shadow, right? So we take Abyssal Reverie for another 10% atonement healing. And then the Void Blast atonement healing is doubled. Which means the Mastery is, is all super valuable as well. So yeah, when, you, when you're popping... Entropic Rift, your Void Blast's Atonement Healing is insane. It's doing super good uh, value. And then you want... Void Leech is probably good if you're getting trained, but most of the time I think Embrace the Shadow is nicer because most of the damage that's actually going to come in on you is from things like Warlocks and just stuff that happens to, like maybe Shadow Priest, stuff that actually dots healer as well or just off hits healer, stuff like that. And then Collapsing Void means at the end of the Rift, it just does a big explosion and does a load of healing. And then every time you do penance damage into a target or, or healing, the void gets bigger and does more damage. So you just want to get as many penances off as well during the void. So I think it's like penance and then four or five void blasts and then another penance after you mind blast. And then obviously you want to try to stack this up beforehand, right? So you get that first penance is eight ticks and makes this really nice for the most of the duration uh in terms of talents again we're not taking pom but we're taking basically all of the same stuff same logic with improved purify if you're playing as a shadow priest you want the disease removal this is super super nice so you can try try and take probably this out for this against an sp would be decent maybe master spell could come out as well depending on if you're playing it's something where you need it normal stuff here but this time we're coming down into words of the pious because this actually helps our Void Blast again. So you want to go for that shield, or most likely you will have gone for the shield before you go for the Mind Blast uh, pumpage. And 
master spell pi all standard stuff we haven't gotten into anything here generally lacking talents a little bit more because we've come down to words of the pious so we don't have the option to go for mind control but you could flex into it off death and madness again it's kind of personal choice options for mental agility and inspiration as well just these are the noteworthy talents basically that you can kind of try and try and flex into out of certain other things you could you could arguably potentially drop this but i wouldn't recommend it but most of your healing is going to come from atonement with this build so keep that in mind body and soul twins and wavering will to come down here this is all the same as in oracle we got the powered life surge of light angel's mercy and then the standard stuff down here again all the missing talents i've talked about in the oracle video i would go and watch that one already if you haven't watched this one uh, if you haven't watched it before you're watching this one because i go into this a little bit more detail there and i'm not doing it again because i can't be bothered atonement radiance ps power of the dark side standard stuff grabbing everything here as well sanctuary arguably you could drop but this is obviously really nice with the void blast you're going to be void blasting a lot more than you do as oracle where you don't smite that much at all so sanctuary does actually have some value here you could put the sanctuary point into pain and suffering you could also put it into malicious intent you could put it into shield you could put it into borrowed time so you've got a few options there that are all relatively good borrowed time is okay as well haven't figured out a way of getting another point into it but yeah this will do for now other points of note is we've got all the radiant stuff because we're still playing harsh discipline providing that nice pump during the rift you could also potentially skip this and go for points into aegis and then you could skip some of the radiant stuff maybe just honestly maybe just bright pupil you still want to have the radiance sort of to fall back on a little bit in terms of high pressure when you can't cast but then you could then well then you would put it into shield discipline basically and this would be better for your mana however mana is actually not that important as void weaver because so much of your healing comes from smite and and offensive penancing which are essentially free so usually you will oom um, if you don't die and you make it to deep dampening and you are still healthy and your team doesn't go into a crazy position and you can just turret you will out of mana the other healer it's probably the most efficient healing, healing spec in the game provided that you're actually you know not dead but you won't lose because of mana at least now in this build we've gone for the shadow stuff on the right so we've got shadow covenant twilight corruption which buffs shadow covenant basically makes your penance into a full shadow spell that does more damage and healing which then obviously procs this as well so your empowered penances right after you mind blast are going to be really pumper especially if you go for the harsh discipline build that i have here and it's going to do eight ticks so that's going to do a ton of healing and then having that void blast to follow up to reset the penance with train of thought and then do a ton more healing is a huge deal void summoner then while you're doing that is going to reset the cooldown of your void wraith or is it here by two seconds every time you do it every time you you uh you void blast every time you mind blast every time you penance and then you've also got inescapable torment right so penance mind blast shadow of death it's a shame that void blast isn't on this i think it would be super op if it was but penance mind blast and shadow of death cause your mind bender or shadow fiend to teleport behind target so ideally your rotation i guess when you're trying to pump is you're going to shield to get words of the pious this is after i i guess doing two radiances right say you've got two radiance stacks from harsh discipline then you go for a shield then you pop the mind bender and then you go for the mind blast into fatty penance void blasts into repenance into death and then your rift is going to explode and you're going to do loads of damage with inescapable torment which is going to get full value and it's good times sometimes you're not going to be able to get the the void wraith up first maybe it won't be up something like that so you'll have to go for the mind blast first it's situational but yeah that's uh the main portion of the build and sort of the rotation for your big pump healing obviously outside of the big pump it's going to be sort of more rotational radiance penance shield kind of switching it around and then throwing some smites in there try not to get cc'd and throwing out cooldowns to sort of delay pressure keep in mind that you won't have the premonition to sort of bridge those gaps so you kind of have to try and bridge those gaps with raw casting so positioning is even more important on void weaver than it is on oracle you have to really try and take make make use of that phantom reach stay max range try to convince your team not to pull back to you just stay in there turret the nearest target to you and just absolutely pump it don't pull push in deep behind pillar 
then your spec is going to fall down a little bit because you're going to be more susceptible to CC and it's going to be a lot harder for you to just pump out the, the actual costs. And this is going to mean you have to use CDs when it's not really optimal. And then you will find gaps where your team is under pressure when they actually use something and you don't have anything to cover it. And this is where the spec can become awkward. So team is, the, the spec is very much about how your team decides to, to, to pressure and what they decide to hit. And if they understand how to play with Void Weaver. Again, PvP talents, pretty standard. Radiance, Phase Shift, Inner Light and Shadow. Most of the time you're going to be playing Inner Shadow. You could potentially switch up Phase Shift to Strength of Soul or Purification. Uh, or maybe even Catharsis, depending on what you're playing. If you feel like you don't need the Fade. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Any comments or ideas on talents that you can switch up, let me know. No worry, they noteworthy that Atonement with Shadow Fiend and Void Wraith also auto attacks plus inescapable torment is currently bugged and transfers 17% less than intended. Okay, so Void Weaver gonna own soon. Alright, that's the final final closing thought. Love to see it.